everyone, Werewitch here with Harry, who has promised to keep his comments to a minimum for these quick tip videos. Uh, what did I promise to? Let's get straight to the tips. Okay, so here's the first thing. I know you're frustrated. If you're already watching this, you're looking for help. I want you to know that you've got this. You can do this. In V Rising, the boss fights test your understanding of the game and how well you can apply this knowledge to the fight. The following checklist will add as much weight with your gained know-how to tip the scales in your favor. What one method used for beating a V-Blood may have worked great, may not work for another. It's a matter of finding out what you're missing. Let's go over the checklist together. Do you have the highest possible blood percentage available to you? Does it synergize with your gear or spell loadout? Should it even synergize? Or do you need to go with the more balanced approach? Are you using any crafted or merchant bot potions, any enchanted brew, potion of ferocity, or the best healing potion available? Have you beat all the bosses previous to this one? Have you tried taking out another boss level adjacent, or even a higher boss that you can beat that might unlock a component to make better gear? Have you attempted the fight during a blood moon to gain a little extra damage? Or have you encountered the fight during the day when you should have fought it at night? Are you using the environment to your advantage? And I do mean everything. Is there a boulder, a rock, a nearby monster, a tree, a pack of nearby wolves that could distract a wandering boss for you to get a couple more hits in? Have you tried a different spell loadout, a different weapon or armor? The time you take now to learn other skills will pay dividends at a later boss fight, or all of them. Can you unlock gear or item recipes on your research, study, or Athenaeum? You can also buy missing recipes for merchants as well. Okay, one last thing. Repetition is key. Keep trying. You may pick up on mechanics that I or someone else might miss. If you keep trying and learn something, anything from your attempts, then you aren't failing. You're just learning where to place the knife. Do not give up. We believe in you. Yeah, if Witch can do it, you definitely can. So that's the checklist. Let's look at the fight. Okay, we are over here at the Atom fight. We are currently using Shadow Moon chest guard armor, uh, the chest and legs. For boots, we're wearing Dracula shadow boots. Hands are shadow gloves. We're using these for the movement speed. Uh, we're currently using the end bringers, but uh, level 30 ancestral will be fine. Uh, we're gonna use this for the set it and forget it. <clears throat> Using our Blood Rose Potions, Blood Rose Brews, and the event uh, Amulet of the Unyielding Charger, all for movement speed, Phantom's Veil. Uh, we are using Pandemonious Stone on Veil of Chaos, eludes, uh, increase elude duration by 90%, increase damage of next primary attack by 20, inflicts a fading snare, lasting 1.4 when illusion explodes, increases damage done when illusion explodes by 23%. Glowing Moonstone on the Spectral Wolf. We're using this mainly for the last bounce that heals. The wolf returns to you after the last bounce healing for 94% of your spell power. It's also why we're using uh, Scholar 100% Blood. Uh, we're going to use Wraith Spear today for this um, along with uh, Crimson Beam. The uh, jewel on this one is Hidden Stone. Um, and increases damage by 23%, projectile range by 23%. The other stuff's only good if you're playing with other people. All right, we also have on our Witch Potion and uh, Vampiric Brew, Potion of Rage, and Witch Potion. At last, I will make this world my own. You are no match! And we're gonna try to get some health up here. Away from me, world. Didn't get much at all, if any. I wanna keep moving.
Don't want to hit him when he bubbles. Really dumb of me. Do your best to just stay away from him the entire fight. You're just going to be causing problems for yourself. Okay, we're getting ready to move into the next phase. Get your health up as fast as you can. To use your veil. He's getting ready to drop on you. That's when you want to use it. This is your ah. Is hurt. Okay, we don't have a veil for like seven seconds, so this is going to be bad. Dumb. But we got out, so that's okay. This is what power looks like. I think the key to this fight mainly is moving. Make sure that you keep moving. What the? Oh yeah, soul shard of the monster. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of different. I, I've said this before. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. I think that staying as far away from him as possible is a great thing. I like the spectral wolf for the heals. It helps a lot. Um, Wraith Spear is just great damage, especially when you're using Scholar Blood. However, if you wanted to be more spongy so that you can take a hit, obviously you shouldn't, you could, you could be using different gear. Um, my movement's not that great. I make a lot of mistakes as you saw there. 
Um, so I try to have better movement to make up for what I lack as a player. Uh, so if you think about that too, that can help as well. Um, I probably should have concentrated a little bit more. There was a couple points in that fight I feel like I probably should have concentrated on the uh, generators a little bit more, and I didn't. And I think I paid for that. Um, so just try to keep that in mind. It's it's a balance of, of movement and, uh, and, and, and learning the fight too, right? So uh, in the second phase where he's dropping all of those AoEs down on the ground, uh, keep your veil up and ready, depending on where he drops that. I got lucky that last one. That was sheer luck that the the AOE dropped over in this corner over here um, where I'm firing the Spectral Wolf. He dropped it over here, and I moved this direction. That was pure luck. Um, <clears throat> but definitely start heading towards the outside. And I'm sure there's some other telegraphed uh, thing there that 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 I've missed that you might pick up on that lets you know where he's really going to drop down from uh, and, and that may help you but as I was saying if you don't know save that veil um, veil of chaos is great because you can bounce twice get you a little bit further uh, than you normally would with just a single one but you know there's argument for other ones that deal more damage after you um, veil and there's all kinds of other stuff too. So anyway, this is how I did it. I, I hope some of these techniques and just watching me do that helped you. Um, I am not a professional in any way, shape or form. So that means you can do this fight. Uh, just keep trying, you will get it. Okay, so that was it guys. If this helped you out, slap that like button, subscribe, or just leave us a comment below. Harry and I will get back with you as soon as we're available. We have lots of content with tips like these peppered in, and more videos like this one for the games we play here at The Project. We love having your company. Which doesn't have very many friends, and its current group is less than desirable. That would include you too, Harry. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you later.